In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Amen. Christ is in our midst. He is in the Another smorgasbord of wisdom to choose from this morning. This writing in, of St. Paul to the Corinthians has one of my favorite lines. My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. It represents a radical abandonment to trust in God's providence in awareness of the fact that even, well, only finally when we admit and come to the realization of our own finitude and our own weakness, can we understand the sufficiency of God and the fact that he actually is there and that we need him. And it's totally, absolutely, mind-bogglingly profound. It's interesting at the beginning of this, I'll tell you just kind of a sweet little story. You hear this interesting line about him being in Damascus and persecuted and lowered down a wall in a basket. And uh, I know someone who grew up in Damascus and he and his friends used to play a game where they would lower one another down the wall in a basket. Can you believe that? So anyway, um, it's still there, that place. But today, what I want to focus on is uh, the woman, the woman with the issue of blood in today's gospel reading, whom we know as St. Veronica. She was, she was in the midst of a huge throng of people. You may remember last year we did, I had the kids all surround me. Remember that? All the kids were all around and I went, okay, get really clear. And I went, who touched me? Do you remember that? And they're like, we're all touching you. And that's very much what was happening here. Jesus was going through the city. People were surrounding him. And I want to evaluate why maybe they were so interested in him. And among the many people who touched him, this one <coughs> reached out. Power went out from him. She was immediately healed. And he said, who touched me? And they went, what are you talking about? Everyone's touching you. He said, but I perceive that power went out from me. That's the scene that's set for today's homily, that section of the Gospel reading. I want to start with some beautiful words from St. Nikolai Velimirovich. Think about Christ as the light from whom power goes out to heal. And St. Nikolai says this, When the sun's rays touch a rock, the rock begins to shine. When a flame touches an unlit candle, it begins to burn. When a magnet touches a metal object, the object becomes magnetized. When an electric wire touches an ordinary wire, they both become electrified. All these physical phenomena are only an image, only a parable of spiritual phenomena. All that takes place on the external plane is only an image of what happens on the internal plane. The whole of ephemeral nature is like a dream in relation to internal consciousness and like a fairy tale in terms of intransitory reality. The soul is the consciousness of the body and God is the consciousness of the soul. When God touches the soul, it's vivified, it's enlivened and given sight. And then when the soul touches the body, it does the same thing. The soul vivifies and enlivens the body. The body receives light, warmth, magnetism and electricity, sight and hearing and movement from the soul. That's St. Nic Nikolai.
I want to say that we become conformed to what we conformed to what we prioritize in our lives. We become most truly whatever it is that we unite ourselves to, whatever it is that we plug into. <laughs> it's a good terminology for we become whatever it is that we plug ourselves into these days. And we plug a lot of things in these days. We're contingent beings. We have no life in and of ourselves and we're needful. And this is important for us to realize that we're in need. We're in need and it's okay actually to say, I'm in need. I need help. I can't do this. This is often not the same as having the freedom to say, I need, which a lot of times means I desire. To be in need is different than that phrase, I need this, I need that, that's my point. We're not only formed by, by what we see, but we're defined by how we see as well. So think about this phrase, and I'm thinking about the, the woman, St. Veronica, who was healed in today's reading. Think about this phrase, I need to see Jesus. I need to see Jesus. And then consider also the contemporaries who heard about this man during his time on the earth. Simple, this simple, wise and dignified man. Unpredictable, exceedingly loving, yet a, yet a rock upon which hypocrisy is shattered. Accused by the powers that be, performing miracles nearly at every turn. If I had lived in Jerusalem and heard of about such a man at the time of Jesus, I might have said, I need to see him. I need to see that. I need to check this out. I need to see Jesus. This is very well the case of the crowds that came around that we hear of, thronging about, pushing in upon the man who was a sight to behold. A spectacle to all of those who needed to see him. Yet it Though even bumping against him and his disciples, they really didn't touch him, nor were they really touched by him. Perhaps they were shining forth the light of their own curiosity upon this enigma. Yet a light that comes forth from itself, that produces its own radiance, is limited to its own perception. And it only projects itself outward. And so what I'm trying to say is they were projecting maybe their curiosity at this spectacle named Jesus. And then when we do that, we see only what we need or what we want to see. I need to see this guy. What an incredible contrast we behold in the one who in her illness was not even seen to be worthy to be in the midst of the crowd. Due to her constant affliction, she would have been considered unclean. The light of the curious and inquisitive ones, everyone else, would have been quickly turned away from that kind of person. Perhaps she was afflicted by God. Maybe she was rejected because of some sin she committed. Maybe we'll look at her only enough to provide our own diagnosis. To cast our own judgment and attribute that judgment to the righteous judge who hasn't judged me with such afflictions. But back to the woman. I imagine her in a moment saying those same words as the others. I need to see Jesus, but I think she meant something different. Maybe even I need to touch him. But as one so keenly aware of her own brokenness and unworthiness, having no light of curiosity to shine upon him. Her curiosity is a convenience of those who are unbroken or of those who hide their brokenness. She had no need to spectate. She realized, I do not need to see, but I need to be seen, not to touch but to be touched. I'm lost and I'm bewildered. 
not finding my home in this world of spectators. In fact, I'm not worthy even to be touched, but even if I can just extend my hand and touch the hem of his garment, that will suffice. Even just to breathe the same air as the incarnate God is a gift in and of itself, let alone to touch his raiment. I may or may not be healed, but I will have come into contact with God. And then in her humility, took a great amount of faith just to go out into the crowds as one who was unclean. In her humility, she touched the untouchable one and power went forth. The others had their source, their reason, their purpose. She was looking for hers. So his power went forth into her. His uncreated energy into the being who truly needed him. Unoccupied with anything else, broken, desperate, undistracted, nothing left but tears in her eyes and resounding dejection. She heard the words of Jesus. Daughter, your faith has made you well. The untouchable one who touched the uncontainable God drew into herself what is proper to each creature to be animated by the life that God gives, energized not by fleeting curiosity, the vain pursuits that seemed so interesting at the time, then less so once the next big thing hits the news, but to be animated by God's grace, to be called daughter, to be called son by the lover of mankind. This is the destiny of all who would come to be electrified by the unassuming power of the one who heals in the way that he knows how. She was healed of her physical ailments, as were many others, but not all. But behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called the children of God. Beloved in Christ, now we are children of God. And it's not yet been revealed to us what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has his hope in Christ purifies himself just as Christ himself is pure. So surely, to quote St. Nikolai again, when the sun's rays touch the rock, the rock begins to shine. And when a flame touches an unlit candle, it begins to burn. When a magnet touches a metal object, the object becomes magnetized. And when an electric wire touches an ordinary wire, they both become electrified. But when the human person stands before the Lord, the God of all creation, as one who has none other help, she becomes transformed by grace. And here's your faith has made you well. Becoming most truly what she already is. A child of the living God. So I'm reminding you and me, all of us, beloved in Christ, that this is our purpose and our true calling. To be the children of God. Brought back to life by his grace. This is our healing and makes all that we face worthwhile. We've entered a slumber in our fallen state and we've even been tempted to return to it again and again. Yet we hear the voice of our Savior say to us, Child, arise. Let's not pretend to be asleep or return to that slumber, but let us arise as children of the Most High, sons and daughters of the living God who gives himself to us freely if we would allow his light to shine upon us. May he who bent low in a manner past telling continually make us his own as we work out our faith with fear and trembling. May God our Father be glorified in our lives always, now and ever and unto ages.